you. So yes, we absolutely want to eat organic because of the pesticides and the sprays and the chemicals that are on foods that are not organic. And here's the thing, organic, once you start eating organic, it's gonna taste like way, way, way better versus the other stuff. Your taste buds are one of the things that change very, very quickly. So as you eat better quality food and you stop eating all the salts and sugars and processed chemicals that bring you back to our food again and again and again, and you eat real food, what happens is that real food starts to taste a whole heck of a lot better than the cheaper stuff. And I think everything has a vibe. You mentioned, you know, why buy this apple versus that apple? If I hold a genetically modified apple and I hold an organic apple and really feel it, it's like some people will say, you know, I can feel the, the vibration of that food and the quality of it. And, you know, some of you could be in tune with that, some of you wouldn't. But, you know, it's just a way of saying, you know, we've got high quality versus low quality. Did you ever walk into a room and go, wow, this is somewhere I really, I like this. This is warm, this is friendly, I want to be here versus you walk into your room and go, oh gosh, this is not for me. <laughs> Same thing with the food. Everything has a vibration. Everything has has sort of a a, a combination that, that those those molecules and particles line up to create that food item. So um, yes, question. I have a question. Since you're talking about food. Sure. You know, like when you go to the grocery store, like Publix, you know, you have like your organic chicken and all that stuff. Yeah. But what about like seafood? Oh boy, that's a big topic. We could spend an hour on seafood, <laughs> right? Because you know, I mean, like it's yeah. not like, organic or uh, whatever. Well, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna break it down to the basics. Wild caught, wild caught, no and not farm raised, not farm raised. And you know, I, and again, about 15 years ago, I'm, I'm at Kroger and I'm looking. There's this this pink salmon. It looks great. It's in the middle. It says farm raised with an exclamation point. I'm thinking this is not right. So don't forget, all of your food is gonna be sold to you based on sales and marketing. The stuff at eye level that looks pretty can be really cheap food made to look really, really pretty. So that's a great question. So number one, wild caught. Number two, you know, you want to look at the source of the seafood and you can, you can do a little research online. I'm kind of a research nut, so I'm always kind of looking for articles and looking for what people say. But do some research online. You know, we're, we're always looking for sustainable seafood. Is it killing off the rest of the ocean? Okay, because we have a limited supply of seafood to some degree, and we're consuming lots and lots of seafood. So um, wild caught, number one. Number two, sustainable seafood. And it will say right on it if it's sustainable sometimes. Now, the other thing, you know, we get looking for, are there chemicals added? And, and I want you to really, as students, look at things in question. You know, don't take things at, at face value. Always, always, always do your due, due diligence you know, ask questions, do your research, really look at things, keep reading, keep getting educated. I'll tell you what, I've been at this 20 years, I'm still a student. <laughs> I'm still learning every day. I know a lot about fitness and nutrition and maybe not a lot about other areas of life because I spent my life in, in fitness and, and nutrition. But um, blood sugar and insulin, I would say if there's one thing to study for yourself, for your friends, for your family members, for your career, Study balancing blood sugar and, and insulin levels because that is the ticket to health. That is the ticket to, to really helping and healing and curing and preventing disease. Balancing blood sugar, it's a really big deal. And it's true here, uh, chapter nine, the numbers never lie. So the numbers don't lie, you know, and the numbers that I go by, and again, this is me, they could vary a little bit on the protein end, but I would say um, probably, go over here, 20 grams of protein, and I'm talking an average size person, okay? Um, five to maybe eight, I'll put a P here for protein, five to eight grams of fat. I would say five or more grams of fiber. I would say maybe around 10 to 15, maybe less grams of carbohydrates, okay? And that equals a meal that will balance your blood sugar and burn fat. The numbers never lie. It's a mathematical equation. And the way I came up with this equation, I used to be a fitness competitor. So I had to go out on stage and pose and turn in the sparkle bikini. So we had to burn fat and get shredded to get on stage, right? And I kept looking at the meals that were working in my food log and the next day, my scale would go down a little bit, my body fat percentage would go down. So that's the formula right there, right there. People will say, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck all day long. I'll take a look at their food and say, well, you know, this meal here had too many grams of fat. In your day, you had twice the fat that you should take in, but even more so, it's carbohydrates. 
when you cut the carbs and you go with low glycemic, nutrient dense carbohydrates and lots and lots of greens, I will tell you lots of greens, lots of green vegetables will fix just about anything. That would be the best medicine out there. Yes. Um, how do you feel about intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting, you know, I think it works for some people. I don't think it's absolutely necessary. Chuck didn't do it to lose 200 pounds. But would it help some people kind of like boost the metabolism? I do know some people who do it regularly, they are shredded. So I think it might be great for some people. Yeah, I, I don't know that we're meant to be fed, 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 because if you look at the human being in all history, we've got a ridiculous amount of food available to us. And then on top of it, it's processed. And then we have the topic of addiction. We are highly addicted to processed foods, okay? What happens is you eat the food the first time and it's a chemical, all food is a chemical experience. Yet there's a chemical reaction that goes on within the body that creates an experience. They say, oh, I'm gonna go back and have that again, particularly starch and sugar. So if you wanna lean somebody down and you wanna balance blood sugar, reduce the starch or eliminate the starch and sugar in their diet, and guess what? They will be lean, they will have energy, inflammation will go way down, and that means pulling out grain, pulling out probably most dairy, okay? Things like yogurts. See everybody all the time, they think they're doing the healthy thing, that little tub of yogurt. Read the labels. There's also some information in here about reading labels. I mean, here's the thing, the label will tell you some numbers, and if it has a label on it, chances are the numbers are off. <laughs> chances are it's full of sugar because it's processed. You know, natural whole foods, the foods on this list, they're not processed, they don't have a label. <laughs> So not that you can't eat some foods with labels, but it's critical to learn how to read a label and understand what those numbers mean, and then look at the ingredient list. So let's go to, you know, I'll see somebody at a meeting who um, is eating their healthiest meal a day, it's a little bitty thing yogurt for breakfast, right? We all see this, they come in, they eat the yogurt. And again, no judgment, but if you're trying to get healthy and reduce inflammation and someone is clearly 100 pounds overweight, Inflammation's going crazy, skin tone doesn't look good, and they're eating yogurt, and that's their healthiest meal of the day. They're eating a pile of sugar for breakfast. They're spiking their insulin first meal of the day, and then here comes the roller coaster ride. What you do early in the day sets you up for later in the day when it comes to blood sugar. You can could, you could fast, maybe your first meal isn't until 10 or 11, but the question is what are you eating for the first meal? Does blood sugar spike up? Or is it, you know, I would say a veggie omelet is a great choice, a protein shake is a great choice. You know, uh, a tofu scramble would be a great choice. Yes. So I heard you, you just mentioned dairy. So what is your opinion on, you know, how regularly we are consuming dairy? Do you think that's a good question? Um, my personal opinion based on my research is less is more. Less is more. So in organic always, I'm gonna lean towards organic, and I'll tell you why. Um, one of my mentors, when we were discussing nutrition one day, he said, I want you to understand that the cows in this country have a genetic mutation compared to the cows in Europe. And the nutrition gurus that I've studied with said, oh, you're going to Italy? Go ahead and eat the dairy. It's, it's totally different than what we get over here. So it's not genetically modified. So I think that, um, that I think some of the health issues that we have going on could be directly linked to dairy in the diet. Absolutely, absolutely. Question? Maybe? Good. Okay, so moving on. So, you know, as I was studying nutrition over the years, and I realized that this is the pillar. This is the pillar of how to get help people healthy. This is the pillar of transformation. You know, there are a few other things that I look at with a person um, in terms of nutrition, uh, and, and the big one would be hydration, water. How much water does a person drink? Now, energy comes from, we talked about protein, energy comes from low glycemic vegetables, lots and lots of them, particularly greens, but energy, your body is, what percentage of your body is water? 60, maybe 70, I've heard. A lot, a lot of it is water. So if you're dehydrated, unless you came with a big bottle of water. So you'd probably need to drink two of these, right, for the day. About three times, and it shows. You know, their skin's beautiful. So, you know, you'll also be able to tell when you look at people, you know, do they have a healthy glow? That will tell you something. What is their skin tone like? That will tell you something. What is their energy level like? That will tell you a lot about hydration and nutrition. 
So, and again, these are textbook things. You're not going to read this in a textbook that says, hey, look at your person. <laughs> look at yourself, look at your person. But, you know, those telltale signs. I had a client in um, last year, gosh, real attractive woman, just had, you know, a pretty physique. She'd had four children, I think five children. And, you know, she was carrying the baby weight. Well, the little one was like, I don't know, five, five years old, right? And I was like, you know, she's had five babies and she tries to work out and, and um, so we balanced her blood sugar, kept her food log, and bam, she lost 30 pounds. She looked like a supermodel. But even more interesting, she said, you know, she had pale skin. She said, you know, I had these basal cells, cancer cells removed. And I had one left. And basal cells aren't like a high priority. You know, they'd be the lowest priority if you had some basal cells. And, uh, you know, if you got a melanoma, you got a big problem. Like that, you get taken care of today. But basal cells, you know, they're precancerous cells. And she's freckles and, you know, pale skin. And she said, you know, I cleaned up my nutrition and I had one pretty good sized one on my nose that I hadn't addressed yet. And she said, Kathy, it's gone. She goes, the only thing I can figure is the nutrition. Cancer feeds on sugar. I mean, I, I mean, I want you to get this loud and clear. Cancer cells, we all have cancer cells in us. They feed on sugar. So when it comes to health, nutrition, wellness, cancer prevention, it is diet, 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 diet. Everyone has a quote, family history. But your family history doesn't have to be your history. And when your clients and associates come in and say, well, my mother had this, my father had this. And I'll tell you what, when you have a fear-based, again, I went back to the emotional piece, when you have a fear-based story of I'm so afraid I'm going to have my mother's story or my father's story, you know, you've got to write a new story. And, you know, that is partly what, you know, I go into, and again, in the book, and, and saying this is comprehensive, you know, this little book, I kind of, after, you know, so many years in the business, I kind of went just to the things that matter. You know, the things that matter. Great nutrition, water, you know, consciousness. So, you know, you all are creating this career in the health and fitness industry. And we've got an epidemic of health problems. I mean, it's kind of a match made in heaven. You're stepping into a field where there's nothing but need, right? We know people are unhealthy. We know, to some degree, I think everybody wants to feel better, do better, and really enjoy life. You're not going to do that if you're sick, <laughs> you know? So I think you're, you're stepping into an area and the possibilities are endless of what you can do with it. But the more you learn about nutrition, it will really set you apart in your career no matter where you land in your career. So most of you are at what level? Okay, so we're all over the board, right? So some of you are gonna go on and get a graduate degree. Some of you are gonna go right on out into the workforce. And, and some of you are gonna land in another program where this is gonna be a piece of what you learn that feeds into what you end up doing out in the world. And you know, we all wanna go out and make a difference. Absolutely. So, um, all right. How many people are on social media in here? Everybody. Okay, what, what, what platforms are you on? Are you on Facebook? Raise your hand. Yes, some of us. Instagram? Yes, okay. LinkedIn? Few of us, you should be on LinkedIn. When you're gonna go out, even right now, I want you to go and build a LinkedIn profile. And again, I'm giving you real world stuff here because that's where the, the, um, the people who are recruiters, and if you go to get a career, they're gonna look at your LinkedIn. I had one of my college students who I started training when he was 12, I saw him on there yesterday, I said, oh, your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> and of course his mother was his friend. She said, buddy, <laughs> I can hear it, buddy, you need a LinkedIn profile. <laughs> so um, start a LinkedIn profile. Twitter, do we actually tweet? Mm -hmm. We do, great. Snapchat, a few of you. Okay, I gotta get my Snapchat up and going. YouTube, some of you. Okay, so you have some little pieces of paper here. Da -da -da. Right? Little pieces of paper. If you don't have one, we'll pass you one. Okay. Let me hand some of these to go back behind you. Okay, then we have a little card here. Okay, so I want you to put your name, your phone number, and 
your email. Uh, one more? Okay. And then put on the back of that card the social media that the first one, you know, you can put an S for Facebook, you can put an I, whatever is your number one platform, number one platform that you like to go on. Because I want to know where you are. And I want you to know where I am. <laughs> I want you to see me as a resource when you have questions. As you progress, as you go out into the world to get your career, I want you to know how to get a hold of me. Yep, help yourself there. Okay, I want you to connect with me and add me on social media and see me as a resource because I typically teach students anything they want to know. I'm always available to answer a question. I have lots and lots of resources. You may come to me next year and say, Catherine, I'm looking for a job now. Who you got? And I guarantee you, I got somebody. <laughs> got somebody who knows somebody. So, how many of you know what networking is? Professional networking. Most of you. Okay, so professional networking is just talking to people with purpose, right? So if you're saying, hey, I have a girl right now who needs a, a job as an architect. So she goes out to networking meetings and people hook her up with some contacts and she gets an interview. She's going to get the, 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 the what next job as an architect. So I want you to see me as a resource in terms of networking, and we're going to use social media. Sure, you can send me an email. I'd prefer you to contact me through social media. I had somebody yesterday, she said, I really don't do social media. I just email. So we sent a big old email. To me, that's like snail mail, <laughs> just because I'm a social media nut. Um, but I will say, the other thing is, you know, we go on Facebook, and if you're looking for a job or a resource, then we've got thousands of people at our fingertips. We can post and ask for something. Somebody asked me for a personal trainer in Alpharetta yesterday. Oh my gosh, I had like 10 references of great trainers. So the first guy, I said, hey, you're my first pick. He said, I've only got an opening at three in the afternoon or Sunday and not a match. But we can do things at our fingertips in just a couple of minutes here. So what I will say, if you would like the copy of Simple Fat Burn, just hand that card in to me. I'm going to ask you to connect with me on social media. And you've got, if you don't want it, leave the book. Okay. Um, the books are $20 on Amazon. And if you read the book, leave me a review. <laughs> Let me know what you liked or didn't like about the book. Okay. So the book is a gift for you today. And I think it will drastically help with what's going on. Other questions? Oh, we're almost at time. So, all right. So, in closing, I want you to think about results and progress for yourself. Because you're going to be the people out there coming out of the exercise science program. You're going to be the people who are the leaders. People are going to look at you. They're going to look at how fit you are, how healthy you are, what your knowledge base is. They're going to look at what you're doing. And they're going to have questions for you. But also think about, you know, the, the key, some of the key things that I talked about today that can directly help people. So, and with that, I'm going to close. Taryn? Can we give Kathy a nice round of applause?